welcome back to the channel. On today's video, I've been called out to a customer's house because they've got one radiator that's not getting hot. All the other ones in the house are getting lovely and warm, but this one is staying stone cold. So we've got two things to check. One of them is air and the other one could be a faulty valve as the boiler pressure is fine and everything else seems to be working okay. So I'm just gonna show you using a thermal imaging camera. And as you can see here, that radiator is cold completely from left to right. And if we test other ones on the system, we can see that that one's getting lovely and warm. Perfect. And that one, he's struggling a little bit, but he's getting there. And all the other ones in the house seem to be working pretty good. So what I think we're gonna do is we'll check the valve itself as sometimes these pins can get stuck. You can give them a little tap with a hammer and hopefully the pin pops out and that should be this video over. If not, we're gonna to have to drain the heating system down and change the TRV valve. So let's put you down and let's get plumbing. So the first obvious thing to check is air, and what you need is a bleed vent key and a bit of tissue. We'll open up the air vent. If there's air, then that might be a good sign. If it's water, then obviously the system's full and it could be something to do with the valves. So let's go ahead and check the air first. So now we know that the radiator is full of water, let's put our attention down to the TRV valve as it's most probably gonna be that. So this is the thermostat and what we wanna do is take the head off and then check the pin that it's got movement. If it hasn't got movement, that could be stuck. And if it has, then obviously it could be something else. But we'll take them off, check it for movement, give them a little tap and hopefully the pin comes out. If not, we're draining down. This one's got a screw and we'll just undo him fully give him a wiggle and remove him like that. Now, we get a hammer and we can bounce on the pin. He's... Ah. I don't know if you just saw, but that pin has actually disappeared on the inside. So I don't think we've got any other option but to drain the heating system down and change the TRV. So before you do any draining down, what you wanna do is turn off your boiler. So this is a pressurized system, we'll turn them off. Now I make sure that when we drain it, the pump's not running and he's gonna run dry. Let's go find a decent drain point, chuck a hose pipe outside, open them up and get this drain in. Now lucky for me, I've actually been to this job before and we've installed this radiator here. I should have filmed it for a YouTube video, but we just went ahead for a short as it was quite high access to be able to drain down. But yeah, this was the way that I decided to pipe up this nice designer radiator. And I did install a drain point. So let's put the hose pipe on there and we have outside access to just chuck the hose pipe down through that drain. Okay, so that's running okay. And we'll just give it a bit of time, open the air vent up, and then we should be good to go. We'll just open this air vent. And a good check to see if he's sucking. Bit of spit on the finger, and that should disappear just like that. With the air vent open, this radiator is now draining, and I can start by prepping the floor, covering it all up as we're working over carpet. Um, you know me, I like to use my Dublin products and we've got a big foldable mat to lay down and then we can get our trays and the slides underneath and catch every single drip as I don't want to get anything on this carpet as we're going to be losing money. I'm going to start with the foldable mat. Get that in there like that. Tuck them up as close as we can. Then we can get the foldable tubs underneath. Give them a nice little bend on the side as it stays in place. Tuck them around the corner and that should be perfect to catch as much as possible. I'm going to use my pipe vice Amigo Slim to hold the valve and then up on the nip axe and we'll just crack it. I'm 
while we wait for that to trickle out, we're going to be fitting a brand new valve from Danfoss, as this was a, an original Danfoss, and they do match some of them in the house already. So this one has just got a male thread on it, and these are a little bit different than normal, as they're olives, and the sizes are a bit different than your other ones. So you have to fit these olives for some reason with these valves but i do think they're the best and you can change the flow direction on them on the top because we're going to be cutting off the pipes most probably underneath i'm going to be resoldering using a long reducer so this is eight millimeters to 15 as i just find i don't really like using any compression on eight or ten mil i would always allow for it to be compressed on a compression fitting on a 15 mil stub so yeah just my preference but i just think it's much better what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shift this mat back a little bit, get this flat, and we're going to tuck this tub all the way around that valve. It should give me better access to take the valve off. So because we've got a nice little bit of play, I'm going to go ahead and cut it with a hacksaw straight underneath as we're going to be soldering it anyway. Okay, let's start taking this tail out. I've got a little spigot from a Rothenberger set, as I don't like carrying the whole spanner. I'll turn them on the joker. Looks like he's made in with hemp and boss white, I think. got some tissue but I know we've got some water dripping out but this does could do with being cleaned out a little bit more Just try and give this a bit more of a clean. I'll 
just dry fit the valve first. Make sure it goes in again. So they're all tailed out, we can start making up the new one, and I'm going to be using some Loctite 55 as the thread has moisture in it. Don't try and use liquid PTFE or anything like that if it's got moisture, as it just doesn't work. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, a little crisscross, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I'm just going to do eleven. Why not? And I'm going to just wind them in and get started. We can't use the ratchet inside as we're unable to actually take the olive off as it is sealed half on there already. So I'm just tighten this up. Lovely and tight. So hopefully this is going to behave itself and we can take the tray away because I want a bit more access for when we're soldering. So we'll put the radiator valve this way as this matches all the rest and we'll mix some paste up on the end of here knock this back a bit get the olive far down as possible and then we're going to stick the reducer on this push them down and pop them back up again i'm just going to protect the wall using my burn mat and i'm going to take off the paint using the blow torch I'll give them a little inspection around the back. That looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm happy with that. To just put a bit of paste on this front face of the olive. And then we'll put uh, that olive on our new fit in down over the top. Give that a run around. That helps keep the olive in place like that. And then once more, and that's perfect. Just give the fittings a good wipe over, get rid of all that jointing compound, and now we can fit our valve over the top and do that. Perfect. So the radiator valve are all done. What we want to do is close off all the air vents, shut off the drain point, and then go ahead and fill the system. If you have drained a lot of the system out, what you want to do is put inhibitor into the system, either via a radiator or a magnet underneath the boiler. So I'm just going to shut off all the air vents, close off the drain point, and then come back up here, and then we should be able to get filling. So I'm just going to shut off the drain point that I opened. And we can use the air vent key to do that as well. Look at that. 
Plum Shark. I'll put a link in the description where you can get this too. It's a pretty cool ever. With that drain point shut, we can now repressurize the system. This is a Worcester and the key's left in place, of course it is. And we'll open up the thinner loop. And wait for the gauge to hit about one. There we go. Okay, let's vent our new radiator. Hopefully we get no leaks. And we'll fill them up and then we'll turn the boiler on and put the heat camera in. Hopefully we fix this problem. Perfect. And a quick re-top up of the pressure. Make sure he's back up to one before we turn him on. Come on. That's good with me. Turn him on just in case he starts airing. I'm pretty sure these Worcesters like to go through a little startup stage first before they do anything. Alright, got a pilot light. Let's see if our rag gets hot. So, moment of truth. We got our FLIR camera and let's see what's going on. Already you can start seeing that heat coming through. Look at that. Come on, baby. Perfect. He's going to start creeping all the way across and then making his way up and downwards. But look at that. Just goes to show, using one of these cameras can diagnose things as well as see them work. So there we go. It was the radiator valve all along. We first put a hammer to the pin, give it a little tap. Nine times out of ten, they just pop back out. This one, for some reason, just vanished and went straight in. And we did probably get lucky with no water coming out. If you're going to use a hammer and bouncing on the pin to try and relieve him, make sure that you are ready just in case you have a jet of water flying out because there is always that chance. We don't have any leaks. That looks all pretty good. We made the valve tail in with 5.5. Previously, he was made in with Boss White and Hemp. That was the old preferred method. This is the sort of new one, especially if you have moisture on the threads. Nice solder connection. So the um, the compression is on the 15 and not on the 8 mil. Last thing you want to do is use an 8 mil compression fitting as it just crushes the pipe. It was good to obviously show you with the floor camera and as you can see now he's heating up lovely all the way across the rad and slowly make his way down to the bottom. If you have a cold spot when you're using one of these then that may indicate that you need to flush the system. So yeah that's this radiator all done back hot just like the rest of the house and if you like today's plumbing video please give it a like drop a comment down below and please subscribe if you are new. I'll see you on the next one.